What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back out again with another video. So, the question becomes, after weeks of buildup for the MJF, Ryan Danielson, AEW World Heavyweight Championship match, after the back and forths they've been having, after the interactions they've been having, after how personal it started to get with the promos week by week and Danielson having, you know, having to go through these matches and to win in order for this match to even happen, for us to get to this point, does it live up to the hype? Well, I can answer that for you very quickly. And yes, it does. This is the only match at this point I have watched so far. Uh, I just got home not too long ago, and I knew I was going to make it my mission uh, to watch at least this match. I'm going to go back and check the other matches from the show. I've been seeing some good things on Twitter. I've tried to stay off of it as much as possible because I didn't want to be spoiled. Um, but this match, I knew if there was anything I was going to see on this show tonight, it was this match. And boy, did they give us a treat. I, 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 don't, I don't really have much to say other than these guys, they put in some great work tonight. They definitely did. Like, they... They really went out there and gave it they all, man. Like, I don't even know what to say other than it was a treat for us as wrestling fans to be able to enjoy, enjoy this, this Iron Man match. So, let's get right into this uh, this particular match. I actually did take notes on this. Um, this was the main event for AEW Revolution, man. This was the main event, the, the match that a lot of people wanted to see. And I uh, wanted to get down some of the notes and things that I, I was thinking about and noticed during the match at that time. I have plenty of them because I had a whole hour to sit back, eat some food, and relax and enjoy this, this great fantastic showing by these two athletes you know because boy you got to be in some great shape to keep going out there and doing what they were doing so we're going to start with the introductions you know everybody was hyped you know when Danielson came out there but then uh MJF did a little bit did something different he had some strings out there he had some violin some cellos and stuff like that and uh I couldn't really hear it as well I'm not sure if you guys were able to hear it live on the stream i couldn't really hear them as well but i heard that they were playing his theme music and then he came out or whatnot with the mask he had when he uh returned or whatever uh to win the the little casino chip or whatnot uh, last year he had that mask on with like a, a robe on and as he's about to give the championship to the referee he ends up slightly he like drops it so he picks it back up and then crowd chanting, you effed up, and he's going around, you know, yelling at the crowd and stuff. I love that. That was that was a nice, you know, it wasn't, I don't think it was playing, but, you know, definitely brings out his heel character. So, we start with Danielson, was trying to get him in a uh, submissive lock. That was the thing. Danielson is a technician. He's going to do whatever he can to get him in, like, these submissive situations. Danielson and MJF had a great exchange uh, during this point of like great in ring wrestling, like they're they're countering each other. They're they're really it's like it was like at least thirty seconds of them countering each other and and putting each other in different moves and stuff like that. It was really you know good to see that they're trying to show uh, MJF's vers versatility here because we know Danielson is good when it comes to the chain wrestling. Uh, MJF pouring water on a kid mid match. MJF starts getting frustrated, so he heads. Uh, to the outside to where the the um the like the front row area and he gets somebody's water and pours it on the kid just a random kid just sitting there i was like i i guess you know that's that's what mj's gonna do well you know mid match hey fuck you kid <laughs> we know mjf don't give a damn about the kids uh and then as he's walking around the ring he yells at the camera. Uh, you know, he he basically says, "I guess this is gonna cost me a star from Dave Meltzer." You know, he, his his shot to Dave Meltzer. You know, Dave Meltzer has his five star rating or whatever. So you know, him doing that may cost him a star or whatnot. Then MJF starts working on Brian Danielson's shoulders. Danielson's shoulder was, you know, uh, uh, I guess you could say a target. He had the little uh, tape on his on his shoulder area, shoulder and arm area. So that was his mission. His main goal was to try to pretty much incapacitate that 
arm slash shoulder. Um, the sunset flip from the top rope from Danielson, beautifully executed, looked hella painful. Uh, shout out to those guys willing to take those type of bumps in this match. Uh, MJF doing a moonsault on the outside to Danielson and it starts to sell his knee. Danielson moves out the, uh, I believe he moves out the way or whatever, but MJF lands, but he ends up tweaking his knee. That's a, now that becomes a story point or a target point for Danielson to try to go for the knee because he just tweaked it. And you got to put some respect on uh, MJF's name because one thing I've noticed about his matches, he's really good at selling. He he will sell a certain part of his body like it looks like he is legitimately injured. So uh, kudos to him for now giving uh, Danielson that little bit of, okay, now he's hurt. Let's get into it. Them rolling, uh, like they're at this point, they're trying to get quick pinfalls, you know, like the quick roll up. So they're interlocked with each other. So they're rolling around a ring, like as if they're a ball, trying to get quick pinfalls. And I had to make a note uh, shout out to the ref with so many pinfalls in the sequence. Like it's literally one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Shout out to the ref. Like the ref is really pounding his hand on the uh, on the ring canvas, so he had his work cut out for him uh, uh, during the early stages of his match. He was in position every single time. I'm like, damn, bro, the ref is really getting the work out here. But I, I thought that was kind of a little bit little little hokey. But you know, it's wrestling. You know, it kind of took me out. I'm like, bro, these niggas is rolling around on the on the ring like a, a damn ball. But either way, it was you know, it was it was a it was it was a high spot. I. I wouldn't prefer it not to have happened but you know it the crowd enjoyed it so all right at that point uh let's see where i'm at uh the, oh so after that whole in sequence um the crowd is giving the wrestlers props they start cheering you know giving them a standing ovation they enjoyed that sequence and the chaoticness of all these quick pinfalls make and at this point there's still no no one has a pinfall win so far um Danielson gets the pinfall with his running knee. So after this whole exchange, Danielson's able to get the pinfall with uh with the running knee. So he get he's the first person on the board. But then things change very quickly. So after that, MJF ends up getting disqualified with a, a low blow right in front of the referee. And then goes for another pinfall to tie it up 2-2. So when MJF hit hit the low blow or whatnot now it you know that was a you know that was a disqualification so Danielson got the win but then he went for a pinfall and then he went for another pinfall so it happened so quickly that the scoreboard had to change up because I was like wait a minute shouldn't Danielson got that pin uh that that pin uh that disqualification you know he should have got that but it took them time for everything to catch up so it happened so quickly. So that was a very, very interesting thing he did there. He got two quick pinfalls because he knew, all right, the referee's right here. I'm going to cheat. I know I'm going to lose this, but I can get these two right back quick. And that's exactly what he did. Got two quick pinfalls on Danielson. So it's tied up 2-2 two -two at this point. The running knee to MJF on the outside while uh, while MJF was like sitting on the on this little chair propped uh, in the corner by the barricades. They were, you know, kind of using that spot. Looked pretty brutal. Um, MJF is slapping Danielson while he has him in the in the figure four lock. So Danielson has uh, uh, MJF in this figure four lock. He's focusing on the knee, and MJF is like, "I hate you, I hate you, I hate you." And then he starts slapping him, and then Danielson starts giving him the Kirk Patrick's himself some stiff slaps. And I thought that was a pretty cool exchange as well. Um, at this point, Danielson is trash talking MJF like, "No, you know what I'm saying? Where you at? Where's your heart? Where's your fight?" He has him kind of. He's talking trash to him on the on the apron. They both start working injuries, uh, their injuries um, to each other's body. So uh, Danielson is doing the yes kicks to uh, MJF's uh, bad leg. And MJF is pretty much slapping Danielson's bad arm and shoulder. Um, you can hear someone call out a table spot for them to use. I clearly heard it on the camera. They were going to it's the table where the uh, the championship was being placed on by ringside. And you can hear someone say, table spot. So I'm like, all right, well, we're going to get us a table spot here. So um, at this point, Danielson is laying on the uh, uh, on the table after MJF kind of uh, put him there. 
Uh, MGF goes to the top rope, top turnbuckle closest to the table, and hits a beautiful elbow drop. The form and everything was perfect, and the impact, woo, impact was insane. That that was a beautiful elbow drop, bro. You don't see too many good elbow drops. That one was a good one. I don't know how y'all think about it. Let me know. I thought that elbow drop was beautiful. He hit it with the form and everything. That that looked looked pretty brutal. Crowd chanting, holy, you know, holy shit or whatnot. Um, at this point, Danielson barely makes makes it uh to the 10 count to get back into the ring to, to stop the count. Then MJF says, I'm not finished with you yet. And proceeds like there, there's the broken part of the table is still propped up. So he proceeds to get Danielson out the ring, puts him in a pile driver position, and pile drives him on the other half of the table that is still slightly up, but it's broken off. Look brutal. I was like, hey, I like that. If the table's not completely torn up, we're going to use the other part and tear it up on you as more as well. So that looked brutal. At this point, MJF is, you you would say, it's kind of in a league here, you know, in the sense of damage-wise. That's what it's looking like. So after the pile driver to the broken part of the table by MJF to Danielson, and Danielson now is busted open and starting to bleed a little bit more, he rolls him back into the ring. And he gets another pinfall. So at this point, MJF is in the lead with a 3-2 pinfall. And it makes sense. You know, he just took a pile driver out to a broken table on the outside. So it would make sense he would be able to get the pinfall there. Uh, MJF starts hammering down Danielson with brutal punches. Uh, MJF starts to uh, talk to the camera. As he's beating up Danielson, like talking to Brian Danielson's kids or whatnot, telling them, I told you this was going to happen to your dad. Now he's going to catch some more of the beats. Um, then he even gets more dis uh, disrespectful, D starts, you know, he blows some snot out to Danielson while he's down. Like he's just really kind of degrading the guy at this point. Um, Danielson ends up reversing uh, uh, reversing MJF into uh, one of the ring posts. He was trying to uh, hit Danielson's shoulder into the ring post, and he was able uh, to reverse it at the last second. Then Danielson gets MJF into the ring, and Danielson goes to the top rope and hits a beautiful head. But, and as the result of this head, but uh, MJF is just leaking with blood it got to the point where the crowd was like oh wow like it was just blood profusely just just falling down his face he was a crimson mess uh all from that uh brutal head but um danielson hits a running knee and puts uh mjf in another submission hold and mjf taps so now it's three three so now both guys are bloodied and bruised up and we're back even. Um, then MJF applies the salt to the earth submission and Daniel uh, Danielson reverses it uh, and puts MJF and uh, puts him into the bell lock. Then back into the salt of the earth. Uh, and it was a nice back and forth sequence with, with these guys trying to make the other person tap out, you know. Then MJF prevents Danielson from reaching the bottom ropes at all. This was a very beautiful sequence. He has him in the salt of the earth. Then he grabs the other arm because Danielson is inching towards the bottom rope. He grabs the other arm. Then he's trying to grab his leg so he can't get out of it. Pretty much, Danielson is getting folded like a pretzel and it's very interesting to see someone as a, a technical wizard that's good at you know folding people up he's the one that's getting folded right now by mjf i thought that was very uh a, a very interesting sequence and the crowd was into it because they're like is he gonna make it you know and it, it definitely looked uh uh looked brutal um at that point, you got this is awesome chance. Once Danielson is able to break the hold and get to the rope by putting his pretty much his toe onto the bottom rope. This is awesome chance. I'm loving the match at this point. It's, it's really starting to get more intense. Now they start throwing knees at you like, well, not knees. They start throwing uh, fists at each other while they're on their knees. They, they look kind of drained and tired of just throwing blows. You get the yays and the boos and whatnot in the middle of the ring. 
and the announcer uh comes onto the onto the microphone he says there's five minutes left they stand up to their feet it's like they got energy all of a sudden and they start throwing blows the crowd is loving it they turned up the pace mjf keeps uh going to get water throughout the entire match that was the thing i didn't know if that was going to lead to something but i wanted to make a note of that like every few minutes when he had an upper hand and you know he gets out the ring, he takes a breather, he gets some water, pours it on the face, drinks them, and, and then get back into the ring. So I, I didn't know whether that was leading to something, but I was like, all right, maybe it will. But I, I they definitely made a point to show that. And we even got a chance of H2O. So for all you uh, water lovers out there like me, I love me some water. H2O got some respect put on its name, and it got a chant tonight. So that was awesome. Um... This was a, whew, this was a cool spot. MJF hits a second rope pile driver to Danielson, but he sells the knee, so he can't get to cover him. But he's selling the knee, like he's writhing in pain. Brutal spot. I'm thinking, okay, it's over. All he has to do is cover him, right? But he wasn't able to, because you know he's you know he's selling the knee and there's a close-up and you can see it looked like uh mjf had like a knot on his forehead like it's just like it, you can see the battle wounds why do i have my headphones on i just realized that <laughs> hey i had to make a cut in the video because i accidentally the uh, it stopped the recording <laughs> and then i realized the first half of the recording i'm just putting this in here first half of the, uh, me recording this uh this review of this match I couldn't hear anything, and I found out my headset was not working. So, that's why I had that on. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Anywho, uh, this video is all over the place, man. This this match was all over the place. Uh, we got Fight Forever Chance. This was just, it was just fantastic. And then Danielson ends up pretty much suckering him in because he's not moving at this point. When MJF tries to go for the cover, he suckers him in, and uh, he... He gets him in a single uh single leg crab with like and at this point he has it in like there's only a few seconds left with like 40 seconds left in he's already had this in and and mjf is just holding on he's trying not to tap the crowd's going crazy is he gonna tap and then mjf taps after the clock hit zero so it's still tied three three crowds booing Tony Schiavone is getting some orders from Tony Khan on the headset. You can hear him say, oh, oh, okay. I'm going to go down there and tell him. And pretty much, uh, you know, after the medical staff is checking on Danielson and uh, MJF, they pretty much restart the match. Sudden death. You know, one pinfall decides it all. And the crowd is hamped up. So, uh, the match, uh, you know, match has sudden death rules. And then, of course... You know, MJF got to go to his cheating ways. Um, he ends up hitting a, a low blow on Danielson, but the ref didn't see it. And then Danielson, you know, that you know, he's still able to, you know, withstand that. And Danielson hits a running knee, and this is later on at the point, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to get the pin on Danielson, but he still wasn't able to do it. And then Danielson hits a beautiful running knee out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere, but beautiful running knee. And it was like 2.9 seconds for one second in this match. I thought, holy shit. That was a really, really good close call, close pinfall. 2.9 seconds. I promise you that's how close that was. Uh, then MJF, um, at one point, he's trying to cheat at this during this entire segment. So at one point, he gets the title. He's about to hit Danielson with it. Ref's like, you do this, you lose this match. You lose the title. And ref's like, go ahead, do it. So he gives him the title. But then he pulls out the ring. And he's trying to get him with the ring. But Danielson's pretty much able to reverse that. And then at this point, Danielson has him in the uh uh in the in the in the uh, in the one-legged uh crab. Again, he's going back to that injured knee. And while MJF is writhing in pain the ref sees the aew ring diamond ring takes it off his fingers puts it in his pocket so now mjf is in a world of trouble what's gonna happen is he gonna tap that's that's what they were going for the crowd was at this point a fever pitch because they're thinking maybe danielson can get the job done 
uh mjf is able to get to the ropes but he does something smart he gets to the ropes with his finger but he taps with the other hand because danielson's not looking out he just has to hold applied he's not looking at him so danielson thinks oh okay cool i got the win but no he didn't the ref's trying to explain to him no he reached the rope he you didn't get the win and then you go down the camera pans down and mjf is outside the ring right below and when uh, the officials the medical officials was giving mjf oxygen and stuff they left the oxygen tank at the ringside so guess what happens Danielson goes check gets bumped right upside the head with the uh oxygen tank and i'm like oh well there we go that's that's it into that insult to injury mjf proceeds to use danielson's own submission move on him the lapel lock he has him in he's locked in it's over right and then they do the traditional one referee gets the two as his hand drops and he picks his hands up for a three, and he's he's fighting out of it. He's fighting out of it. The crowd's going crazy. He's fighting out of it. Is he going to do it? Is Danielson going to overcome this? He falls back down, and in a surprising finish, did not expect this, Brian Danielson taps out to MJF in his own move. Now, I thought they were just going to have him pass out. No. He tapped him out. In his own submission move. Granted, of course, he got hit with a fucking air tank. <laughs> oxygen tank. So, I think most people would probably wouldn't even be able to tap out. But that's neither here nor there. I just thought that was truly a shocking ending. Was not expecting him to tap to his own move. But it just shows that this is how much they're, they're riding on the uh, MJF train to have Danielson tap, tap out. Granted, with some asterisks, you still had him tap out. You could have had him pass out. But you had him tap out to MJF using his own move on him. I loved it. This match was great. Great. This was, to me, this was, uh, I, I, I honestly, if I had to rate this match on a scale of 1 to 10, it, was, it, it started off slow, but then it got better. I was already at an 8 halfway through, and then towards the end, I, 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 I give this a solid 10. It, this was worth the hype, in my opinion. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was very entertaining. Shocking ending. Did not expect MJF to win that way. I knew MJF was going to win, but I didn't know they were going to have Danielson tap. And, you know, it kind of puts MJF over. Like, I made the American Dragon tap out. Granted, with asterisks, but I made him tap out to his own move. I enjoyed it. That's a 10 out of 10 for me, man. That was fantastic. So, comment down below. Let me know. What do you guys rate this match on a scale of 1 to 10? And actually, what's your favorite match from this pay-per-view tonight? Uh, once again, I am going to go check it out. I'm going to go check out the rest of the matches uh, later on. So, I'm definitely going to be able to give my opinions on some of the other matches. But just off this alone, I had to do a review on it. You know, because I had to talk about this. This was fantastic. Enjoyed it. 10 out of 10. Be interesting to see where they go with this going forward. I kind of wish this was a like their last match in a series of matches. Like maybe if they would have had two matches prior to this Iron Man match, I think that would have been fantastic to stretch out the feud. Because if you start with start the feud with an Iron Man match, it's not too many places you can go up from there. So honestly, I, I wish they would have stretched this out just a little bit longer. Uh, feud wise but i don't know if this is the end of their feud but it i mean i don't know it it kind of feels like it is they made them tap <laughs> so I, I don't know we'll see how things play out but let me know down below how y'all felt about the match and just the show overall did you guys enjoy uh revolution this year but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i am still young to be the youtube wrestling champion of the world and still you're in the Cuts World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.